Well, good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are in the country. Uh, I'm Ron Lonsdale, uh, Vice President with Colette, and uh, thank you for attending today's event. Uh, we truly value the partnership and the ongoing support of the federal retirees. And uh, I, I guess we've had a trusted relationship over two decades. So, um, you know, with the highly successful rollout of the vaccine, the trajectory of coverage, um, you know, travel is making its comeback, and it's not going to be too long before we reconnect the joy and love of travel. And what better countries to get us inspired than Portugal and Spain? Angela, whom you'll meet in a few minutes, will be taking us on an incredible virtual journey of these spectacular countries. Now, we know travel is going to be more meaningful and purposeful, and uh, we really can't wait to share the world's beauty culture, the antiquities to our guests. And uh, we're very committed to taking care of the places we live, work, and travel. And we focus on four key areas, which is the community, people, travel, and planet. And our goal is to make a positive impact on the world to preserve for generations of travelers to explore. Now, the Colette difference, you know, we're celebrating our 103rd year. And it's really to give you more peace of mind, more expertise, more on tour, and the more needed flexibility, and also the more exclusive membership benefits. And, you know, traveling with Colette really comes with those benefits that take the guided travel experience to another level. And the emphasis is on the value and the member's travel experience. Now, we do have 160 tours to all seven continents. Um, visiting over 58 countries. Um, we have unique and perfect itineraries. We're more of a premium operator, four-star, five-star experience, really best value for money. And we just don't have one type of tour. We have five distinctive travel styles. And each tour is style is really uniquely designed to fit your travel needs. So instead of me going through all of it, I'm going to show you a quick video from our talented product designers who actually curate these immersive programs. We have over 160 tours to all seven continents and five distinct travel styles. Spotlights is our fastest growing travel style. These tours stay in one destination and really give travelers a chance to live like a local, explore, and experience the city in depth. Spotlight on Paris is always très populaire. After all, it is the city of love. Explorations programs are small group tours that offer more culturally immersive experiences. Explore the Alps entirely by train on Switzerland, hidden trails and majestic peaks. In 2020, all Explorations tours will be carbon neutral and most of those tours will have impact moments. Impact moments are responsible experiences like visiting a social enterprise, supporting the local community, or doing something to protect the environment. Our classic tours span the globe. They feature the must-see sites. They connect travelers with the local culture and have the food that's worth traveling for. Our product design team is on the road all year, creating tours that our guests are asking for. We stay ahead of trends. We listen. We collaborate. We innovate. That's why this year we have over 20 new tours to places like Morocco, Patagonia, Croatia, Greece, the Azores, and Russia. <laughs> We've been doing this for a long time. Now, we are focusing today on Portugal and Spain and their amazing countries and personally, um, two of my favorite countries in the world. And I, I love the food, the wine, the dramatic landscape, the sunshine, it's amazing people. Um, and, you know, to get us going, I want to give you an insider's look on why we travel or why we want to travel to these two beautiful countries. And this was Angela doing a video uh, about a year ago. I like to be surrounded by people and, you know, get them excited with the destination. That's what I like to do. I'm Angela, hi. <laughs> and I'm with Colette for nine years. I've been guiding for 20 years. It's been a wonderful journey. Okay, so if I could take guests with me on tour, I would take them to Spain's Classics and Portugal tour. 
Well, visiting Iberia, it's already an excitement. So you have great food and great wine, you have beautiful landscape, you have beautiful weather all year round. So guests feel very attracted by visiting a nice destination, good weather, good food, beautiful monuments. So we have a lot to offer over there. Now we know a video has a thousand pictures and you know, and a picture has a thousand words, but um, the person that I'd like to introduce, she's originally from Lisbon. Um, Angela has the passion for traveling the world, but has never really lived abroad, uh, always returned to her beautiful Portugal. After completing a bachelor's degree in tourism and hospitality, she's always worked in different sectors of tourism industry, from hotels, port agent, certified interpreter guide, able to communicate in, I think, Portuguese, Spanish, English, and French. Uh, you know, guidance in her blood. You know, she loves sharing her insight. She's very passionate, um, certified European tour manager, cheerful, energetic, empathetic. You know, Angela really loves to make the guests on tour feel at home. And you're going to get a good sense of that uh, when she starts talking about her country and Spain. And um, also, she's our regional destination manager for Spain and Portugal. So she has a lot to do behind the scenes in, in contracting the vendors, uh, curating the programs, working with our designers. And I don't want to take her thunder. So I'm going to introduce Angela. Angela, you there? Yes, I am. And my dogs are barking. Oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> have five, five dogs. So I'm at home, not far from Lisbon, the capital, just a few minutes driving. Thank you so, for having me. Yeah, hola. And I, I know it's coming hola. on to seven o'clock and it's uh, yeah. Portuguese or Portugal National Day. So it lots is. to celebrate. So Yes, that's right. It's a national bank holiday. The best way to celebrate is to be here because I love to talk about Portugal and Spain. So I'll hand it over to you and I'll be quiet. Yes. So I wanted to show you a, a map of Portugal so you get to know uh, Portugal, uh, the logistics when we travel. It's, everything is so small here because Portugal is a very small country. Spain is much bigger. So both countries, they are part of the Iberian Peninsula. In this map, you can see Portugal and you see a little bit of Spain and you can see Portugal mainland and the islands, the nine islands of the Azores, part of Portugal and Madeira as well. Uh, the distances are so short that you can visit so much in a short time. Uh, in Lisbon, the capital, you can see that it's quite in the middle of the country. Uh, from Lisbon to the most important, uh, Lisbon is the capital and the most important city, but the second one is Porto, which is located in the north. So if you drive from Lisbon to Porto, you drive two hours and a half, more or less. If you want to fly from Lisbon to Porto, it's a 45 minutes flight. Uh, if you decide to go to the third most important city of Portugal, which is Faro in the Algarve, so you go to the south, then you can drive a couple of hours and you are in the most beautiful uh, summer resort uh, of the country. If you decide to fly to the Azores, you fly for about two hours and 30 minutes to Madeira, approximately two hours, and you can also go to Madrid, the capital of Spain, in one hour flight. So everything is very small uh, in Portugal. We are a small country, only 10 million of inhabitants and 92,000 uh, kilometers square. Uh, and I just put it on the right side of this slide, uh, some of the awards that Portugal got uh, into 2020 and also uh, a few awards before that. And as you can see, we were the Europe's leading destination in 2020. So Portugal is an emergent country. It's so beautiful and so uh, authentic that it becomes uh, an important destination uh, nowadays. So the next slide, I'm gonna show you um, Lisbon, the capital. Here you go. So this is Lisbon. Uh, Lisbon has everything. It has monuments, museums, uh, not far from Lisbon, just 25 minutes driving, you get into the mountains, so you get in a different landscape. You can see the river in this slide, so this is the mouth of the river, so you are close to the Atlantic Ocean, and you have beautiful beaches also close to Lisbon, to the capital. And in this slide, we can see the castle of St. George on top of the hill of Alfama, which is the oldest of the seven hills of Lisbon. We do have seven hills like Rome. Uh, the medieval quarter that you see in this slide is Alfama. Uh, the history dates back of the time of the Phoenicians, the Romans, the Moors. 
So there's a lot to experience in terms of history and culture, even if you are in a capital that also offers and provides great hotels and great restaurants and nightlife uh, and other services like other European capitals. So we have both the history, the tradition, the culture, the monuments, museums, and also uh, what we like to see in big capital shopping malls and all, all of that. So the next slide is a place that is not far from, uh, from Lisbon. You drive 25 minutes. Again, a note, everything is so close uh, that you can drive and see so much uh, in short time. So 25 minutes in the surroundings of Lisbon, the capital, you get to Sintra. Sintra is classified as World Heritage by UNESCO. So you find here very important uh, buildings. Uh, it used to be a summer destination for the nobility and the royal family of Portugal. So palaces and in incredible properties were built along the centuries. On top to the left, you see the oldest palace in Portugal, the National Palace of Sintra, the one that has the conical chimneys, very uh, curious uh, chimneys. Uh, it dates back of the 14th century. Inside this palace, each room tells a story, stories of, uh, of the kings and queens, of the nobles of the time, and also, you know, it has the architecture uh, and the decoration, which is a beautiful collection of tiles uh, inside each room. On the right side of the slide, you are in a fairy tale palace. Pena Palace, also located in Sintra, dates back of the 19th century. And we, we normally we say uh, that this palace is like the Disney uh, type of palaces because you imagine uh, the princess you know, outside over there in that beautiful uh, property. So it was also one of the palaces of the royal family, the Portuguese royal family. And just below, you have the village of Sintra, which is at the slope of the mountain range. So in that part, you, you can just wander around and discover the narrow streets, the alleys, the medieval area of Sintra. So Sintra is definitely a very important destination. Uh, in the surroundings of Lisbon. Now we go up to the north part of the country, to Porto. Uh, I'm sure that you have heard about this city. It's the second most important city of Portugal, but also is the place where we drink the port wine. The port wine is uh, a Portuguese um, uh, uh, beverage that has been famous all over, all over the world. So when you drink a port, immediately you reconnect to Portugal as a destination. And here in Porto uh, are located the wine cellars. So the port ages in, in Porto uh, city. Uh, this is a, an incredible city, very, very traditional um, on the border, on the bank of the river Douro. And what you see here is the medieval quarter. Uh, and it's on a hill and you're going up, you get into the 18th century uh, environment in terms of architecture, because back to the 18th century, the port as a product started to be exported mainly to Britain and then to the rest of the world. And of course, we enriched uh, uh, with that port trade and many, many buildings were built by, back then. And now we have a different landscape outside of the city of Porto, but also not far if you drive like an hour, uh, you get into the, the valley Douro. Uh, Douro, all the valley, and we're talking about approximately 100 uh, kilometers long. Uh, the Douro Valley has been also classified as World Heritage by UNESCO. The reason is the landscape. The landscape is unique. You don't see this landscape in other places. Everything was carved in different and several terraces for the production of wine not just port wine, but other table wines. And all of this took centuries, you know, to design the landscape as it is. So you see the river Douro, the valley is a very steep, deep uh, valley, and the nature is amazing. And the type of property that we find in, the, in this region is called Quinta, which means farm. Uh, nowadays, 
you can actually participate and stay in one of these farms because they some of them they were transformed into four to five star uh, inns and you can get into the daily life of the farm and the production of wine so this is another uh, picture of the Douro region and all the the quintas the farms uh, and one of the tributaries of the river and we are in the north uh, again we are in the north because i wanted to show you a little bit of the north of portugal it's not as popular as the the rest of the places like lisbon and the algarve and madeira island it's a different uh, area of the country that has been untouched well preserved and out of the touristic uh, path so we see the oldest funicular, we call it a water counterbalancing funicular. It's an elevator that, that dates back of the 19th century. And we take this funicular up the hill to visit the church. And you see the church on the right side of the slide is a sanctuary of uh, Bon Jesus uh, or Good Lord. Uh, with the Portuguese, we are very, very religious. And that's, that's good because uh, together with religion also comes the heritage, the culture, the traditions, and even the festivities that we dedicate to saints uh, all over the country. So this is a sanctuary. Either you go up the climbing the stairs, 150 steps, or you take the funicular, which is also on the side. So it's a beautiful uh, place to visit. It has incredible views. And just below, uh, on the right side of the slide, is a traditional village called Amarante. Uh, people come here also during the, a time of the year uh, when we have a festivity dedicated to a saint, uh, which is known for being a protector and also a, a saint that helps people to get married. So a lot of girls, they go up to the north and they participate in all the festivities here in Amarante. So Braga and Amarante are these two places in the north. And now a different world. Can you see the difference in terms of colors, in terms of uh, materials of construction of, of all these uh, buildings? So we are in the south. It's a different world. In the south, uh, we find whitewashed houses because the south is warmer in terms of climate uh, and uh, a more flat plain uh, landscape. So on the left side of the slide, uh, on top, uh, the city of Evra is also classified as World Heritage by UNESCO. It's a very, very ancient uh, city with many different, um, many different civilizations, let's call it this way. From the time of the Romans, 2000 years ago, we have one of the best uh, well-preserved uh, buildings still standing up, although uh, a few columns, Corinthian columns disappeared along the time, but you can see that is a temple, is a Roman temple and it's still standing up. So it has 2000 years old. It's an amazing temple. It's called the Temple of Diana in honor of the goddess Diana. So this is one of the highlights of the city of Évora in the Alentejo in the south of Portugal. And just below is my favorite, favorite walled medieval uh, village, also in the Alentejo, and it's called Monsaraj. Monsaraj is on top of the hill you can get lost over there, but you get lost in a good way. <laughs> you are surrounded by the walls, but at the same time, it's so bucolic, so peaceful, so picturesque that you wander around narrow streets, medieval uh, layout, and you shoot amazing pictures, amazing views from the top of the hill. Just in the background of that picture is a lake is Alkeva. This is actually an artificial lake, the biggest in Europe, because we use the water from a river for the irrigation of the fields for agriculture. But further down after the lake is the Spanish border. So you are overlooking Spain when you get to visit Monsaraj uh, in Alentejo. Uh, not long time ago, just a, le last year, if I'm not in mistake, all that area has been very popular for people enjoying uh, to look to the stars. Um, so there was an observatory that was built and right now is known as the 
first starlight destination in the world. And now we're moving up to the Algarve. So we are in the very, very south of the country. Algarve is a very popular destination during summertime uh, because of the beach. Uh, and actually during wintertime, because we have such mild climate that you can go to the beach in wintertime. I've done it many times in January and February. It's still good. Um, so the Algarve is popular, the, the beaches are beautiful, the rock formations are incredible. Uh, you have two types of beaches, the long sandy beaches and then the ones with smaller beaches and the rock formations. So you can do a tour by boat and get into the caves so uh, to see uh, the caves of the, of the coastline. And one of the most important cities of the Algarve is Lagos. You see a little bit of Lagos on the right side of the slide. And now let's talk a little bit about food and wine. And this is my favorite topic as well, because we have great food and great wine. We, we are wine makers as well as Spain. Uh, we have traditional products. You, you are on the coastline, you fish. So there's a lot of fresh fish and fresh uh, seafood. And then you have a very fertile uh, land. So you produce vegetables and fruits. And of course you have cattle, you have uh, meat. So we get everything uh, to make amazing dishes. On the left side of the slide is a bottle uh, cut. Uh, we cannot see the top, but the cover of the bottle is cork. Portugal is the first producer and exporter of cork, and we do everything with, with cork. And inside that bottle is a very traditional beverage, very, very alcoholic. We call it aguardente, that if we translate it directly to English, it means fire water. But it's what people really enjoy after a good meal. And in the middle of the slide, you can see a, a copper a pan where we cook uh, food just with the steam. Uh, and it's very, very healthy way to prepare our food. We don't use any kind of frozen products. Everything is fresh and prepared in a very simple way. Then we have great clams on the right side of the slide. We love clams uh, in Portugal. And below we have codfish. We do not have cod in our waters, but we import cod and we prepare cod codfish in, in many different ways. On the right side of the slide, little pastries, small ones made of almonds. More food coming up. Uh, when we want to have like a we call it in Spanish tapas. Well, in Portuguese, we call it petiscos. Petiscos is the same. So slices of sausage, different types of sausages, cheese, olives, bread. And I can see the marmalade. It reminds me when I was a kid, my mom used to give me bread and marmalade as a snack. So it's very traditional here. And of course, wine. So this is a snack uh, that we normally like to have. Cheese, sausages, marmalade, olives and bread always on the table. And Angela, we always include wine with our dinners. Yes, yes, yes. Always in Portugal and in Spain, always wine together with our meals. So now we are in a different environment. Uh, now we flew uh, two hours and 30 minutes uh, to Madeira, to the islands of Madeira. And we are in a paradise. Madeira has a different climate. Uh, more like tropical. So everything grows up spontaneously in the field. So amazing plants and, and, and flowers. This is the botanical garden, which is located close to the city of Funchal. And can you see the two people on the right side of the slide? They're going downhill. This is a toboggan. Toboggan is a, a transportation very traditional in Madeira. We never had any accidents. You can go downhill. It only works downhill. <laughs> We're still in Madeira, and this time we are in the northern part of the island, uh, and we can see the water the channels. The water is coming from the mountains, and we, we built water channels, uh, canals, to bring the water to the lower, uh, the lowest parts of the, uh, of the fields. And you can do a walking in this beautiful landscape. And one of the traditional villages just below, Santana, so this is a uh, a village in the north, and the traditional uh, houses of Madeira, they look like a triangle shape type of house, all painted with different colors. 
in a different island right now. We are moving to the Azores. I know we have short time, so much to, to talk about and to show you. We are in the Azores. The Azores are nine islands and they're all volcanic, volcanic islands. So you have a different landscape. Uh, this is a tea plantation. The only Euro uh, tea plantation that exists in Europe is this one you can see right in this slide. So all that green area is tea. So we produce tea uh, in this island, the island of São Miguel. So we are in the island of São Miguel, St. Michael, and with the geysers and all the steam coming from the ground, we prepare a traditional cozido, which is composed by different types of meat, different types of sausages and different types of vegetables. And we put everything in a pan and it goes underground and it is cooked underground with the heat of the volcano uh, area. And you can also uh, go to the, uh, to the uh, pools, the, the thermal pools where you can just relax in the thermal hot waters uh, that come from the soil, uh, from the volcano. This is an incredible place uh, in São Miguel, in St. Michael Island. It's called Sete Cidades. It means seven cities. Uh, and you can see two lagoons. One is green, one is blue, because if you are walking on the edge of the crater of the green lagoon, the, the green looks green because it reflects the nature. And if you are walking on the other one, which is the Blue Lagoon, you are walking around, then you are uh, reflecting the sky. So that's why it looks blue, green and blue, and blue uh, lagoons. And now we're moving on to Spain. So you can see the territory of Spain next to Portugal. Portugal only occupies 20% of the Iberian Peninsula and Spain occupies 80%. So it is a much bigger country with 47 million of inhabitants and a surface of 500, approximately 500 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers square. So you can see that our location gives access to different things. Uh, for example, if you want to go to Morocco, to Africa, you just need to cross the Strait of Gibraltar. It's a 45 minute uh, ride on a ferry. And then if you want to go up, you go to France and you cross the Pyrenees. And this location gives us a lot. It gives us the type of weather we have. The weather is very mild and it gives us a great location to go to different places. And we're moving to a different one, yes. So now we start in Madrid, the capital of Spain. Uh, I picked up a, a few pictures to show you. We can see the Royal Palace on top, on the left is the throne room. Uh, it's a beautiful palace. Uh, the Royal Family in Spain is using the palace just for official events. So you can visit the palace and see how rich it is inside in decoration. And then below you see one of the main avenues of the city of Madrid. Uh, we call it Gran Via or Great Way. Um, it's over here that all the, the cinemas, the restaurants, the bars, the nightlife is located in the capital. And on the right side, one of the gates that gives access to the city of Madrid and below one of the fountains because Madrid has many 18th century fountains. And during the, the evening, they all lit up. So it's an amazing uh, ride to go in the evening in Madrid. And this one is a different city, is Salamanca, western part of Spain. Uh, I love Salamanca because it's a very young and vibrant city. Uh, it is in Salamanca that is located the oldest university of Spain. And if you have heard about uh, European universities, uh, this one is really a, a special one, Salamanca University, the main square of the city. And there are many other buildings and many other monuments to visit, like the cathedral that you can see on the right side. So it's a very, uh, very rich city in terms of monuments. And this is a different uh, picture, modern. This is the Guggenheim uh, Museum located in Bilbao. Bilbao is on the north of Spain in the Basque region. Uh, Bilbao is an, att an attraction by itself, but also the museum has been important because uh, a lot of visitors in the city, they come specifically to visit this museum, which is uh, a work of a very important architect, Canadian and uh, um, 
uh, US uh, architect, Frank O'Gary. So there is an important exhibition, exposition inside of modern and contemporaneous art. Another city, you might have heard about the run of the bull. <laughs> it's a very popular event. It takes, every, um, it takes place every year in July in Pamplona. Maybe you don't want to be there uh, during the run of the bulls, um, but it's, a, it's an amazing city full of traditions and, and full of beautiful architecture. And now we're moving on to Barcelona. Barcelona is the second most important city of Spain, uh, but Barcelona combines uh, the uh, Art Nouveau and the uh, medieval art. So we can see uh, a church from the 14th century on the left side, and we can see Art Nouveau on the right side. Uh, the, the picture below is uh, architecture of Antonio Gaudí, very important uh, architect of the modernism time. Now we go into the Spanish cuisine, uh, the tapas. Uh, great food in Spain, like in Portugal, great products and very, very different. So you can sample a little bit of everything because the variety is huge. Sausages, uh, tortilla, probably you have heard about tortilla. We can see the tortilla on the right side. Uh, and on the left side is a traditional breakfast. Uh, I like it very much. Uh, churros and chocolate. So this is very popular in Spain. Now there is a difference between tapas and pinchos. The pinchos, they have a slice of bread and the tapa is served on the plate. So that's why you had those two pictures of the different uh, tapas and pinchos. Two important and very, very uh, famous drinks or beverages, cava, that is very similar to champagne. So it's a very light sparkling wine. And on the other side is uh, trupito, is a herbal liquor. It's very alcoholic, so it's like a shot. You just drink this amount and always at the end of the meal because it helps digestion. So in Spain, we always have a chupito at the end of the meal. Now I wanted to show you something different because Spain is so diverse and so big as a nation. Uh, this is the Mediterranean coastline, Costa Brava. So there are different parts of the coastline with different names. Uh, this one is Costa Brava and you can see how beautiful it is a beach. This is just one beach of Costa Brava. But the coastline is not just beaches. We also have important heritage and important cities. One of them is Rirona that you see on the top uh, left side with beautiful color, colored buildings that imitate the colors of the buildings in Florence in Italy. And just below a modern museum dedicated to Salvador Dali, very important Spanish artist. So he, he was a modernist. Another coastline, Costa del Sol. Costa del Sol translated into sunny coast beautiful sandy beaches, golden sand, very calm Mediterranean sea where you can swim and very good temperature of the water as well. And then the traditional southern uh, villages of, uh, of Costa del Sol in the picture of, uh, of the right side. Also in Costa del Sol, there is an important town called Malaga uh, that has an incredible uh, pedestrian uh, neighborhood where the cathedral is located. This is one of my favorite cities in the south. So you can just walk around, visit the cathedral. There's so much to see in Malaga and you are not far from the beach. Another one, another city of, uh, of the south of Spain, uh, Ronda, uh, which is located on top of a hill. You can see there is a gorge uh, and the, there's a river underneath and a bridge to enter the city. So it's a beautiful location because of the view over that mountain uh, cliff. Another important city, the third most important city of Spain, Valencia. Uh, Valencia has a modern neighborhood that was all built by an important Spanish architect, Santiago Calatrava. And on the left side is the aquarium. It's a huge aquarium. 
And on the right side, you can see several buildings that are part of that neighborhood, all of them dedicated to events, museums, etc. Then another different city in the south, Granada. Granada in the old medieval quarter, the Albaicin, which was the Moorish, Moorish quarter uh, back to those days, the time of the Moors. And then just overlooking the mountains, uh, the mountains are very popular ski uh, destination, uh, Sierra Nevada. So Sierra Nevada is not far from this city, Granada. I love to go to market. I think it's one of the the best activities on, on tour is to take my guests to the market so they can see the colors of the uh, fruits and vegetables and also they can smell. So we go where the locals, they go. They go to shop, they go to shop in the markets. We also like to visit the markets. And now I'm going to talk about this tour specifically that I've done it many, many times, uh, Spain's classics and Portugal. So Spain's classics in Portugal, I love this tour because it gives you an overview of Iberia, Portugal and Spain. We visit the most important cities, the highlights, but at the same time, it gives you the opportunity to have some free time to relax, to, to do what you wanna do, to do some shopping on your own. So it's a combination of, of that. And also, uh, although we have to drive a certain distance to get to point A to point B, we, we do have time to relax and to enjoy the landscape on the way. Um, also, something that I love about this tour is that we stay in hotels that are local companies, local properties. Um, and also, we eat in restaurants that are very traditional restaurants where all the locals, they go and have a meal as well. So there's a lot to experience of the Iberian culture on Spain's classics and Portugal tour. So we begin our tour in Barcelona. You land in Barcelona. I'll be there waiting for you. And we have included the, the, the icon, the highlight of Barcelona, which is Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia is not finished yet, so it's still being built uh, by Antonio Gaudí. It's an incredible temple. It's a church, and this is the inside on the, uh, of the church on the left side of the slide, and then the outside uh, on the right. So an amazing uh, visit. Just below is Sorry, it was, uh, it's okay, Ron, no problem. I know it all by my heart. It was just a view of, of the main city of Barcelona. So after a couple of nights in Barcelona, we drive to Valencia, but on the way, there is a hidden gem that I love to show to my guests. It's called Peniscula. Peniscula means peninsula. And this is a city built on a rock uh, in a peninsula. It used to be a, a, a castle of the Templar order. So the Templars, they, they lived here. So there's a lot about the Templars in terms of history to tell you about, uh, but it's in a fortress and it's beautiful location because you are overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. So we stop over there to have some free time and to enjoy. Then we move on to Valencia. And in Valencia, we're gonna spend a couple of nights and we have included several experiences. My favorite one is the paella, of course, because we're going to a, a home hosted, uh, we're going to have a home hosted lunch uh, in a property that belonged to the fishermen. So we actually have an opportunity to take a boat and do a, a boat ride in a, in a big lagoon. Uh, and we visit this house and they are preparing the paella for us because the paella is originally from Valencia. It's right here with all this water that we find the rice fields. So the paella is a very traditional dish uh, with chicken, vegetables, and it's a huge paella. The paella is actually the item where we prepare the food. And then after a couple of nights in Valencia, we move on to Granada. Granada, we've seen it before in a previous slide, the mountains, Sierra Nevada. But we come here, uh, not only because it's beautiful, but to visit one of the most visited monuments in Spain. It's a palace, uh, the Alhambra Palace. So the, the, the palace was, was built during the time of the Moors. And besides the palace, which is already big, 
uh, there are the gardens and the gardens, the Moorish gardens are amazing, amazing. So this is part of our itinerary. Then after spending one night in Granada, we move on to Sevilla. I love Sevilla. So Sevilla and Granada, they are both in Andalusia community in the south of Spain. And in Sevilla, you can just decide uh, how you want to experience the city. You can do a walking tour, so it's, a, it's your choice. You can do a walking tour uh, inside uh, the old quarter that you see to the left, or you can do a boat ride in the river Guadalquivir, and you can see Sevilla in a different way. So it is your choice either to do one or the other. But we have included in Sevilla because Sevilla is where the flamenco was born. The flamenco is culture, is a dance, very vibrant, romantic. Uh, it's also the, the sound of the guitars and the singing. So the musicians, the dancers and the singing uh, all together, we call it flamenco. That actually comes from the word, the English word flame, flame, vibrant, fire. So we, we are going to experience a uh, performance of flamenco uh, in Sevilla in one of the nights that we spend over there. And then we move on to Madrid, but we stop on the way in Cordoba, which is also in Andalusia, to visit the Mesquita, the Mesquita, the mosque, dating back of the time of the uh, Arabs. Uh, and if you want to take the train, and I strongly recommend you to do that, because if you take the train from Cordoba to Madrid, then you can spend more time in Cordoba on your own to do some shopping. And it's really worth it because there's a lot to do in Cordoba. So on this day, we are traveling from Sevilla to Madrid. In between, there is Cordoba. So we're traveling by bus. One of the... Uh, uh, fragments of, of that trip, you can do it by train, is a fast speed train, very comfortable and gets you to Madrid uh, in a shorter time. And now we are in Madrid already, so we're going to spend also some nights here in Madrid and we have included the most important museum uh, all over Spain actually, the Prado, Prado Museum, uh, where you can admire artworks from different Spanish uh, artists like Goya, like El Greco, for, for sure you have heard about El Greco. So all these names, we can see artworks inside this museum. This is the heart of Madrid, uh, the main square, Plaza Mayor. Uh, during the evening, this is the, the best place to, to go for tapas and wine. Uh, there's always something going on in this square. There's some musicians or some festivities going on. So it's a very popular place. Not far from Madrid, uh, we're going to drive like an hour from Madrid, we get to Toledo. Toledo is on a hill uh, and it's full of history. Uh, we do a walking tour in Toledo, it's all medieval, uh, because Toledo combines three different cultures. The Jewish culture, the Christian culture, and the Moorish culture. So you imagine how beautiful it is in terms of architecture. So it's your choice in Toledo, either you visit the uh, church of Santo Tomé and you admire a beautiful painting that you can see in the background of El Greco, or you visit the synagogue, Santa Maria La Blanca Synagogue. So one or the other monuments will be available uh, at your choice. And then after visiting Toledo, we move to Portugal. It's time to cross the border and we enter Portugal coming from the south of the country, from Alentejo. We've seen Alentejo in another slide. And we spend a night, one night in Elvas, which is also a UNESCO site because of the beautiful fortress that you see to the left. And then we move on to Lisbon, where we're going to spend some time as well. And this slide shows you the quarter of Belém and the most important monuments, the Monastery of St. Jerome, Belém Tower, the Monument to the Navigators, all dedicated to the Portuguese discoveries. In Lisbon, it's very popular to go up the hills using a tram. We have several. And there's a picture of a fado singer. So if in Spain we have flamenco as a performance, here we have Fado, which is just singing and playing the guitar. 
not far from Lisbon, Cascais, on the coastline, just 25 minutes driving. Uh, it's a beautiful summer resort that the nobility and the royal family, they used to come here and to enjoy the beaches. And there is one day that we travel to where I live, not far from Obilus, the medieval town uh, in this slide. Uh, you can see the walls of the castle and the whitewashed houses and the narrow streets. It's just a few minutes from where I live, uh, going up north of Lisbon, one hour driving. And also pretty much one hour, 15 minutes driving is Nazaré on the coastline, a very traditional fisherman's village. You know, this is the place where you can still see the fishermen and they're going out to the sea to fish. You can even see that they dry the fish uh, in those uh, nets on the, on the beach. And you can see one of the wives of the fishermen. So the, the wives of the fishermen, they stay ashore and they sell some products, dry nuts, and they have that costume with seven aprons, uh, very traditional. And I wanted to finish my presentation by making a toast uh, to all of us, uh, to Portugal and Spain. And we always toast with port wine, so special occasion. So you have your port wine there and a few cookies, the custard tart for us to make a toast. In Portuguese, we say saúde. It means cheer, salute, uh, and it's our way to toast. Saúde. Well now, Angela, I, I thank you so much. And uh, you're going to stay on because you're going to chime in. But um, I just wanted to let people know that, um, you know, each member that travels with us really deserves a memorable, fulfilling travel experience. And they're definitely going to get that with you next March in, in Spain and Portugal. And we intend to continue to deliver on that promise. Your, your health and well-being remains our top focus and priority. And uh, of, of course, we've um, kept our landing page updated with uh, all of frequently asked questions, you know, what we're doing for the safeguard protocol measures. And the other thing is I just want to point out the safe tourism certi certification, both in Portugal and Spain. So, and also you've been trained on COVID. Yes, exactly. The uh, official tourism department trained us, all of us, hotels, restaurants, transportation guides, all on clean and safe. We all have the clean and safe st stamp. Yes. And the other thing is, uh, you know, um, we know traveling to Europe is going to require proof of vaccination, proof of letter of recovery or negative tests. And, you know, there there's the red, the orange and the green list. And uh, but when we're traveling on this tour next March, we'll be on the green list. You know, things will be somewhat back to all normalcy, but uh, we are still going to be requiring this. And the other thing is in these uncertain times and, you know, it, uh, we've had our travel protection plan for decades and um, currently to date, uh, because we didn't have any travel throughout 2020 and into 21, we've given $169 million back and our, you can cancel for any reason, no age discrimination, no pre-medical conditions. It covers pre-existing, covers COVID, COVID interruption, and um, I, it is the best ass assurance for your insurance. So it's AAA, baggage, medical, you name it. And you can cancel 24 hours prior to departure and get a full cash refund, no explanation needed. And with the pandemic pushing us towards digital, I also, uh, Angela, wanted to point out that we do have the Travel Planner app, the Collect Compass app, and you can hold the entire world in your hands. And it, it provides you with a wealth of travel knowledge, easy to use digital companion, doesn't require data or connect it to the Wi-Fi, and you upload it 45 days prior to departure. And our coaches do have Wi-Fi and the hotel, Angela. So sometimes when we're in the mountains, it's intermittent and may drop. So like these things, else. yeah, these things do happen. And any people that uh, are members have traveled with us in 2018, we still have the loyalty program. We've extended a hundred dollar credit for future travel into 21 and 22. And if you happen to travel with us in 2019, we're extending the $150 uh, travel loyalty credit for 21 and 22. And very excited, uh, Angela, uh, you are going to be hosting this tour. Um, and you did, you know, I know you did a, a welcome video for the Bellum Tower. Um, this date of March, can you tell the people what the weather is going to be like? 
Oh, yeah, it's going to be good for sure, because in March, we're up in the transition to springtime. Uh, so the temperatures will be uh, approximately, and this is approximately uh, 20, 21, 22 maximum uh, in terms of temperature maximum. Uh, then the minimum can be around 15, 16. So that's the average for March. Uh, yep. Yeah. So this is a, a, a beautiful time. I know we've uh, had yeah. some presentations in March and yeah. you were out at the at the markets, at the beach. And um, and I just wanted to let people know that uh, this is the call to action is to Brigitte at Expedia Cruise Centers, um, cruise ship centers in Canada. And also, I just wanted to point out, this is the double rate. We, uh, we have a low single supplement rate, as you can see, and a triple. But um, if you book before September, you have a savings of $200 per person. And also it is combinable with your federal retirees membership benefit of $100. Also, we've uh, sent it out electronically. So um, you, this is our Colette group webpage co-branded with Expedia Cruises with Brigitte's uh, contact information. And you can actually sign up online. And this will take you through all the various steps. And again, it has a day-by-day -day itinerary, highlights. Um, it will list our, our, our hotels. And as you know, Angela, they're great family-run boutique hotels, uh, century located or, or strategically located uh, to give people you know, uh, opportunities to have some leisure time for independent explorations, breakfast every morning, 60% of our dinners that include wine. And again, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that to book early and save uh, and er get that $200 savings, it's before September 20th. Also for federal retirees, you save an extra hundred dollars that no, and it's extended to family and friends. So um, we are gonna have this on the website, but it's uh, the date of the tour is March 20th. The deposit due dates before September 20th. The insurance price is 449, but I know you guys have your own insurance and um, the early booking bonus, the double occupancy rate, the single. And again, make sure that uh, you mentioned that you're a federal retiree member and how to book um, and to see any of the upcoming tours along with this one. Uh, I would encourage you to have that conversation or start it with Bridget, say you're interested because you know, it's easy to us to remove you from the tour, opposed to getting you on if we're sold out. And I know there is pent up demand, you know, people haven't traveled for probably the last 18 months. And uh, we want to put hope in your travel calendar. And we're giving lots of flexibility. And, uh, and again, what sets us apart, you know, really, uh, what Angela's took us through uh, that inc incredible journey, four star guided tour experience, we want to make your trip your own with included choices. So those ch choice on tour is that they're included, but you choose which activity is more suitable, and, or what um, interests you the most. And again, just that spending less time traveling between destinations, perfectly uh, tour pacing. Uh, and again, our commitment to being socially responsible and, you know, supporting the communities and, um, and the countries we visit. And also, I just wanted to let you know, I don't think marketing will allow me to say this, but we do have uh, a summer sizzler sale on now. Um, you can't book it until June 21st. These discounts do not apply to the group tour. We've already put an early booking bonus along with your member benefit. But uh, you can see that, uh, you know, if you're looking to travel on a river cruise or a small group tour of explorations, USA and Canada, Australia, um, we have this aggressive sale um, because the world, you know, and travel is making a comeback. And, uh, you know, we, we know that uh, we're ready to support you and serve you. Uh, you know, Bridge is only a phone call or email away. We truly appreciate the partnership. Um, and again, we can't wait to reconnect the joy and love of travel. So I just wanted to thank you very much for your time today. Angela, uh, you're a very good dear friend. You're very generous and gracious with your time because I know it's coming on to eight o'clock. Those Sorry dogs, for my dogs. They're barking you know, so I was going to say they're so no hungry. place to drop them off. Yes. And, and again, you're going to love traveling with the federal retiree members. Yeah. Uh, they're a delight. Um, 
they've worked very hard to earn this right and privilege to travel and uh, to be a, um, a, a retiree. So thank you again. God bless. Happy traveling. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.